it can feel like that sometimes. We're walking through life and it feels like we've been there but we're not there now. I don't know if anybody else experiences that, but occasionally there's that time where spirit and the connection and the light that we feel inside when we're shining seems very far away. Sometimes. And part of that is that we can become constricted by the fear of life itself, of what's going on around us, of the past pains that we've had, that we've gathered to us through the walk and our journey of life. Sometimes those can seem so strong that the feeling of our connection with spirit seems to be minimal or perhaps non-existent. And those things we call despair. Um, I know that in my life I have walked a path that has gathered many fears. That has gathered some which are rational fears um, for being in places that were not really friendly at times that were not really, really conductive um, to being safe. And those are kind of rational fears. If you live in the city sometimes you look around you and you say, oh my, those look like bad people. And I had an experience with some bad people at some point that got me afraid of that. And all of a sudden I can strict. And we all have this experience of backing away from that. Yet I had an experience that actually runs counter to that which is a really opening experience. Last February, we did um, a free hug fest at 30th Street Station. And believe me, before we walked into this, I had a great deal of fear of walking around 30th Street Station, which is the large train station with lots of people with a sign that says, free hugs. Yet the most amazing thing happened was we started doing this, there were about 12 or 14 of us, and we were wandering around the station, we actually had a strolling minstrel who was playing love songs and Beatles. It was really great, it was really wonderful. And as I got past this, you know, fear of like walking up to somebody and saying, would you like a hug? Right, it's really laying yourself out there to a perfect stranger with a sign that says, free hugs, not asking for anything, you know, just asking people if they'd like a hug. I was astounded by the people who said yes. Some people would do their fear thing and go, no, not me, you know. I don't want to be, I don't know you, go away. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> Others, the most amazing people, there was this one really rough looking guy. You know, the kind of guy that on the street you would go, I'm gonna cross the street. <laughs> you know, he just looked mean and he was sitting there looking grumpy and I walked up to him and said, would you like a free hug? He's went, yeah. And he stood up and he let me give him a hug. And he said, thank you, I really needed that. That's our appearances, our, our perceptions that are so wrong sometimes about the nature of who people are. You see, we collect all these fears and it separates us even further from the lights that shine in each one of us. Because, as we say here, there is one, one power, one presence, that is individualized in each one of us, and each one of us is shining that bright light at some times, sometimes very brightly, when you're willing to say, would you like a hug? When you sense that somebody's feeling perhaps less than, and you go out and your heart opens up and you just wanna say, let me comfort you. Let me let you know that you are not alone here. And then there's those times when the light is not shining quite so brightly, where we find ourselves in anger or fear and we feel contracted, like the reading was talking about. Our whole being contracts into the shell of the physical form and we feel separated from that awareness that we are part of this one, this one thing we call life. The consciousness of spirit embodied here by divine appointment for you to be here right now. Spirit has need of your consciousness to be right here, right now. So today's talk is the next right thing. 
And sometimes that's a challenge we face in life, is what is the next right thing? Where do I go with this? What do I do with this? And sometimes we can do things like hide in confusion. That's a really nice, cozy place to hide. Oh, I don't know what to do. So I'm just not going to do anything. But we know. The meter in our heart. That sense that there is something I should be doing now. <laughs> comes on and it, and it warns us it says you know there's something better that could be here that I could do right now I had an experience in the office on Friday and um, it was one of those experiences now I've done a lot of spiritual work you know that's kind of the nature of what I do meditation and self-examination and you know trying to be a light of love in the world as I walked through it in all of the aspects of my life. And there I was, and I was in the office, and somebody was having a really, really difficult time. And they were angry. And I mean really angry, like screaming at the top of their lungs, angry. And my fear jumped up. And I said to myself, I don't know what to do here. Hung out for a little bit in the confusion area. Right. And then I did the one thing I really try not to do, is I tried to willpower my way through this situation. I tried to stand up and think about what I could do to, make, to diffuse this situation, to help this person in anger. And I started talking about the possibilities of, you know, why don't you just go home and, you know, it's Friday afternoon, you know, Monday will look better. And I went through a bunch of lame excuses, you know. And what I had forgotten is my fear jumped up in me and I contracted and forgot that I am a new thought minister. <laughs> I believe in changing your thinking to change your life and I teach meditation. <laughs> and it did not occur to me say, you know what, this is a little off the wall, but I'd like you to sit down and just follow me for a second. Close your eyes, take a deep breath, take a deep breath. It can change your entire attitude just to center yourself right here and dissipate into all of the things that this fear was beating against me. His fear was expressing his anger. Mine was expressing his withdrawal. Had that happened differently, there might have been an opportunity for love to express itself. For that new thought to come about that says, you know what? Maybe I need to let go of the position that I'm holding on to so tightly that it has contracted me into anger. Now this can happen for all of us. We get into these situations in life that baffle us sometimes. And we forget that we have access to an infinite source of wisdom. Always. It is within us always. It lives in us as an expression of itself in each situation, yet we can turn away from it and not ask the simple question, what's the next right thing to do now? So, sometimes, not knowing what the next right thing to do leaves an opening, an opening to actually ask the question. But the first step in doing that is remembering that the answer is available. That there is a power that is an infinite power of love creating everything that we are experiencing right now in our lives and wants to express even more of that around us. Yet we have to remember. So that brings me to the GPS the God positioning system. <laughs> so the God positioning system is that we're all one and that we are here to experience peace and love and that anything unlike that is an opportunity to turn towards peace and love. When we're working on our own personal positioning system, all of the stuff that says it's important, the stuff that I want, the stuff that I may lose, the desires that I want to fulfill, the attitudes and positions that I have taken in life that this is right. 
those are the ones that can shut off your GPS, can stop you from asking the question. And the question is really simple. What's the next right thing for me now? What is the next right thing for me now? And sometimes, just to get to that question, you have to stop, take a breath, take a breath, and allow enough of whatever you have grabbed onto as this is the way it is to float away, just enough to be open to asking the question, what is the next right thing? And the answer is there, if you're willing to listen to it. And sometimes the answer is not the one you expect. Because the one I expected was to be, on Friday, was to be able to talk my way out of this guy being angry. Instead of stopping and doing what I later, upon reflection, thought, wow, that's what should have happened there. You guys ever have that? 15 minutes after where <laughs> you've left the situation, it dawns on you, ping, oh, my. <laughs> right. Sometimes, sometimes it's, that, it's that, oh, I should have said this, but that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> the snappy comeback is not what I was talking about. The, the, the fact that there was a solution, that if 15 minutes later you came up with it, it was there when you were there. That solution was available, but we didn't stop long enough to bring ourselves into a place where we could be that solution. And that's the practice that we do. That's what all of the practice that we do is. When we meditate and we pray and we align ourselves with the spiritual truth of who we are, we are practicing for that moment in life, which is going to happen because that's what life is, where the challenges arise and we can use our GPS to be an expression of love in that situation. To stop the argument in the middle of it and just say, whoa, 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 let me take a breath here. Or perhaps we need to take five minutes and come back and do this later. Or to respond in the situation as required naturally by all this practice. For instance, I often say, since I'm a great believer in the power of prayer, you might have guessed that, um, that when you witness an accident and somebody is bleeding, apply the tourniquet first, then pray. But that's the response that you need to have that lets you access the power and presence of mind that is always available to us. Life can be difficult. Difficult things and challenges happen in life. Having a basis on which to address those challenges, both in the immediate and as an expression of love is the challenge of how we go about learning to be more enlightened individuals on this planet. How can we shine our light as love? I have another example of how this works. I was in that situation, and this is beginning to sound like it happens too often. I was in that situation where I was offended, and I was angry, and I felt I had been slighted. And I thought about this for a while, I didn't respond immediately, and it got worse. And then I decided, wait a minute, let me take this into meditation and prayer and see what's being shown me that I need to do. And I came back from that still standing on my position. And that's where the other part of this deal comes in, is we have to have the courage to do what we're being told to do, what we're accepting as the direction of our life from our GPS. And that direction was, don't hide this, don't resent it, don't bury it but to talk about it. And so I got on a phone call, and I had the conversation, and it opened up with a salvo. I don't know if anybody's ever do, done that. <laughs> I'm going to be nice and gentle about this. You know, you really pissed me off the other day. <laughs> Oops. Didn't mean to start that way. <laughs> Sometimes those slip out, you know. But I expressed where I was feeling and what I was feeling and how I viewed the situation. And the other person came back with their expression of that. And it, it was interesting to watch this happen because right in the middle of this conversation, spirit stepped in and love unfolded because of the courage of saying, you know, this is upsetting me, but I need to talk about it. I can't just let it continue to upset me. came forward and that allowed me to step into the truth that I was feeling at the time and also to recognize the mistake that I had made in feeling that particular position that I was in. I would not have been open 
to the response that came if I had not allowed spirit to guide the conversation. By the end of the conversation, it was an expression of love, a deep and meaningful progress in a relationship that means quite a bit to me. And when those things happen, I can look at it and say, wow, how did that happen? Yet I know, and each one of us knows. When we're in that situation that seems to miraculously change overnight, we pray on it. It's not the world. God didn't change. God doesn't have anything to change into. It is. All of it. Always. The only thing that changed was me. Into a receptive mode to the guidance, to the prosperity, to the love, to the um, expression of good through me and to me. All of those things changed in my attitude, and all of a sudden, there I was, feeling warm and fuzzy and connected and an expression of love and a reception of love. So the power and the presence are here right now. They are available to each one of us, regardless of where we are, regardless of what has happened in our past. That power and presence is here to shine its light through us and as us in all that we do in each moment. And the difficulty is having the courage to step up to that plate. Because sometimes love is a big commitment. Sometimes being an expression of love requires every bit of courage that you can muster to express this because we may not have the trust. We may not have the trust that if I act in love, it's right. And that's where faith develops from. When we act a little bit and we move from a place of fear to a place of willingness, via GPS, there's a guiding line that goes there, right? Then we can move from a place of willingness to activity in alignment with that willingness to try something different, a new thought. We follow that new thought and we end up in a place of faith. A faith that this works if I do it. A faith that is available to us because it's the innate nature of humanity itself to be an expression of love if we become fearless about it. If we let go of our fears and trust that love is actually the answer that's going to bring about a greater understanding, a greater awareness, and a greater connection and knowing that we are one. Because we all want to have a little bit more faith. We want to feel like there's a purpose to what we're doing. We want to understand that the good that is within us, that it's okay to let that shine. It's okay to be that. And that that's the right thing to do. So I invite you as you go through your week, take a breath. Give yourself a 30 second vacation if you find yourself in a challenging situation and ask, how can I be love in this situation? And then listen, because within each one of you, there is the courage to step up to that challenge. It's the nature of why we're here, or one of the natures of why we're here. People have different aspects of that. So I have faith that as you go through your week, you will have the opportunity to <laughs> express love in all of its ways, whether it's the gentle and kind way or whether you are the gentle and kindness when there doesn't seem to be any. I love you. Namaste.